and I'm going to talk to you about my experience coming up to speed on Chef. Um, the original title was within AWS, but I think because the talk had to be cut down a little bit, um, it's more focusing on Chef than the AWS side of things. If you want to talk to me about our particular implementation of it within AWS, cool. I'll talk to you about that afterwards, take that offline. So, uh, who am I? I am a sysadmin of 10 years. Um, I've been working in the Linux space for about six, seven years. I started out as a Wintel support engineer and then I saw the light. Um, I like to know how things work. Um, I would say it's my biggest strength. My girlfriend would say it's my biggest weakness. Um, I'd never used Chef prior to working at Base2 Services, which is my current employer, and I've been there for about two months. I believe in the best tool for the job. It's not always the cheapest tool, it's not always the most open tool, but I believe in using the most appropriate tool to get the job done as efficiently for, as you can for the customer. I'm not a Ruby developer. I have not touched a line of Ruby code, I have never compiled a Ruby program in my life, and at this point in time, I have no intentions to. <laughs> um, and I also have too many hobbies to count. So if you've seen any of my stuff online for my other hobbies, happy to talk to you about that, but not now. So who are base two services? Challenge accepted. We take any CI or infrastructure, application deployment challenges that you have in the cloud or within physical infrastructure, and we will help you achieve your goals. We have a team of um, cloud-focused engineers um, who specialize in the unique problems presented by the cloud, but will also help you if you're having problems with physical infrastructure. Uh, we pro provide ongoing cloud support, 24-7 technical support team. A um, primary focus is getting your stuff into the cloud and maintaining a cost-effective infrastructure for both us and you um, in your implementation. What this talk is and isn't, it is my personal experience. It's not a deep technical dive. It is a high level overview, and it, most importantly, it isn't a chef versus puppet religious debate. I'm not interested in religious debates. As I said, best tool for the job. I'll use whatever the client requires us to. <laughs> I'll give you my thoughts on the topic. How about that? I'm not gonna tell you what's, what, what's better or what you should use. I'll tell you what I think. As I said, I believe in the best, uh, I believe in using the best tool for the job, but if the client requires one over the other, that's fine. <laughs> so prior to working at Base2 Services, I had a huge background in Puppet. Been working with Puppet for about two years in two separate workplaces, managing hundreds of servers across multiple continents. Um, so familiar with things with the, the Puppet community in Melbourne is huge. Um, there are a lot of Puppet people in Melbourne. Puppet is purely environment based. Whether you've got some sort of layer on top of that that discovers things about your environment and then um, performs actions based on you know, some file you've got on your system or what the host name is or uh, you know, what, part of, what, what part of the DNS is, it's purely an environment based. You know, you specify a production, a development, a staging, etc. It uses Factor to gather information about, um, about what's on the system, you know, what your limits are, etc. It processes things asynchronously. And it processes things in such a way that two concurrent runs of exactly the same puppet manifests may not necessarily run in the same order if you run them one after the other. And also within Puppet, generally I've found that to get it to do what you want, you need to have lots of custom conditions. Now, whether that's through getting stuff out of Factor or using lots of different environments, you've usually got a whole heap of custom logic in like your site.pp or, or node.pp or however you go about structuring it that mean that, that there's a huge overhead when, you main, when you're changing one of these huge select cases. Now I'm working with Chef. And I got introduced to all these new terminologies, cookbooks, recipes, data bags, attributes, files, templates, roles and environments, OHI, and it's very Ruby, more so than Puppet. 
So the differences and the similarities between the two, they both build automation tools. They're both there to get your stuff on a system and make it look like you want it to. They both hold concepts of environments. That is, you can have different, different, um, ma different manifests or different recipes run, whether you're building a production server or a development server or a staging server. They're both built in Ruby and they both have concepts of dependencies. And I'll touch a bit more on that in a minute. Differences between the two. Puppet runs asynchronously, out of the box. Chef runs <coughs> synchronously. Either can be seen as an advantage or a disadvantage, depending on which side of the fence you sit on. Chef is more Ruby-centric in that the DSL that Chef uses when you're writing the recipes, it essentially is Ruby. Now, I'm not a Ruby dev. I don't know anything about Ruby. All I know is how to write Chef recipes. But I know that if there's not something inside of the standard Chef DSL that's covered in the ops code documentation, I can go to our Ruby dev and say, hey, I want to know, this, know how I can get this property about this file, and he'll just paste me a copy of Ruby code, and then there's my, there's my condition. Puppet typically has a single entry point. You come in to an environment, and then you have some logic around that, as I touched on before, to figure out what you then need to put on that machine. Um, whether you're using factor to pull variables out of the machine, whether you're using some sort of a lookup table based on the host name, etc., cetera, um, it's a single entry point. Chef has what I'm going to call multiple entry points, and it has a concept of both roles and, in, um, and environments. So not only can you say this server is a production server, but you can say this server is a production web server and you don't have to have any extra logic in Chef to be able to figure that out. Chef is a DSL-based um, DSL based tool, whereas Puppet feels a lot more like I'm writing something like XML. I mean, it's, it's, it's not XML, but it, it feels like, yeah, it, it feels like I'm not writing something that flows, whereas with Chef, it, it, it does. So what do all these terms in Chef mean? Well, cookbooks in Chef are a collection of recipes. Recipes are procedural instructions that do stuff. They are the, uh, the, the, essentially the tasks that build your system. Data bags, are, these are really cool. Data bags contain global environments, global environment based variables. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, in a data bag, you can have a collection of variables for multiple environments. So you have one file and you have a block. I, I don't actually have any examples here, but um, you can have a block that specifies what your Java limits are for production, then what they are for staging, then what they are for dev, etc. And it's all collected and kept in the one place, which I think is really cool. Um, attributes contain constant variables. Now, what I mean by that is that you have all of your attributes in Chef abstracted out into a separate file structure. So it's sort of a, a, a bit like um, Hira in Puppet to provide um, your variables. However, it comes out of the box. It's part of the standard structure. Files and templates are much similar to Puppet in that you can use static files or ERB templates to drop whatever you want on the box. And as I said before, it's got this, this concept of roles and environments, which I think is really cool because when I'm building my CloudFormation templates in AWS, I know what, when I bootstrap a server, I know what that server is going to look like. I know if it's going to be a web server because it's in my web app scaling group. So I don't want to put extra code in to figure out what that server is when I can just tell it through CloudFormation. So I tell it it's a production server, I'll type web server and then Chef just goes, okay, cool, I'll install your web server stuff. Ohi, which is um, similar to Factor, it's, uh, it's under the hood. It's not something that you have to install additional, additionally to Chef. It's just there and it provides your variables. You don't even have to think about it. And as I said, Chef is Ruby based. Essentially, you're writing Ruby code without being aware that you're writing Ruby, which from my point of view is really cool. So I do have some gripes about both of them. I have more about Puppet, unfortunately, for you Puppet people. 
Puppet dependency help. Hands up who here has run into, pro into trouble with dependencies in Puppet? And <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm just, just who's run into dependency problems with Puppet? And you've, you know, you've, you, the, it's a real pain, right? You can run into huge issues. <laughs> Ah, yes, but often you have dependencies that you're not necessarily aware that are there, and that's where you can run into some big problems, or at least I have in the past, anyway. Um, your run order can change, um, depending on how well you've structured your dependencies, or how well the module you've brought in is. Um, usually, out of the box, there is not very good support for managing the manifest. Now this is not to say that the things can't be built in, but out of the box it can be a bit tricky. Community modules don't always do what you want them to do. Um, there is a plethora of community modules out there. If I got paid extra every time I'd used a community module that didn't quite fulfill, fulfill the requirements, I'd have a few bucks more than I do now. The documentation isn't always complete and it's very easy to get lost within the actual um, manifests themselves. Now these are personal challenges that I found through Puppet. I did work through all of these, and bear in mind, I was using Puppet for two years prior to my current position. My chef gripe so far, after working with it for about two months, is it's extremely strict. You must stick to the structure that is laid out within the chef repository or within the cookbook, otherwise you will run into problems. Um, the verbose bugging is extremely verbose to the point where it'll crash iTerm if you have a large amount of, um, if you have a very large chef cookbook and you're running a lot of recipes and you're running in full verbose, verbose mode and you don't have enough memory on your laptop, it will crash iTerm, which I thought was pretty impressive. And the chef, chef server UI is a bit sucky. If you want to delete lots of nodes, you've got to delete them one at a time which means you have to go into the database and do it, which isn't a problem because it runs on Postgres, but yeah. Now, I guess you've probably already figured this out. What do I prefer and why? Thus far, I prefer Chef. That being said, I haven't gotten nearly as deep into Chef so far as I did with Puppet in my previous roles, so this could change. The reasons why, I find the documentation for Chef easier to follow. I think the online documentation that's been put together by OpsCode for Chef and how to use it is really, really good. When I was working with Puppet, I didn't feel that the online documentation was as good. These are my personal opinions. Happy to talk to you about these afterwards. It comes with, well, it, it has supplemental tools that are really easy to use. Things like Burke Shelf and Knife um, to manage getting stuff into your Chef server. And I've got only a minute to go, so I'm gonna race through this. Uh, I find that the community support regarding the community cookbooks to get stuff installed is much better. It runs synchronously, which means you start at the entry point and it will follow everything in a specific run order. You don't have to link dependencies between recipes. Um, and I feel very confident working with Chef after only six weeks, and I certainly couldn't say that for Puppet. Things that I found cool, Burke Shelf, Knife, Data Bags. Chef uses Chef to install Chef. It's one command to install a Chef server and it downloads a Chef recipe and then runs Chef. I thought that was really cool. Um, it's synchronous and it has the concept of both environments and roles out of the box. However, in summary, I'll use whatever is required to get the job done. If the client says use Puppet, I'll use Puppet. If the client says use Chef, I'll use Chef. Both are very good flexible tools with large community backing and I had to put these two in because that's who I work for and they've paid for me to come here. Base2 services want you. So Base2 services, while we're not actively recruiting at the moment, are always interested in people that have experience with cloud infrastructure. If you're interested, come talk to me. And likewise, we want to help you. So if there's any challenges or anything that we can do, let me know and we'll take that offline. That's it.